Today I want to answer one simple question. How small can vertebrates be? And for those who don't know what a vertebrate is, I mean an animal with a backbone. That includes fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. For this video I'm going to be going through the smallest representative of each of these groups. And when I was asking around, most people didn't know the answer for how small vertebrates can get and what limitations might stop them from getting any smaller. So I hope you learned something new today. And sorry if you're seeing a fly flying around here. I am trying to kill it, but I have not been successful so far. <laughs> The smallest mammal by weight is the Etruscan shrew. This little bugger weighs around 1.8 grams and grows to 4 centimeters on average. But adults can be as little as 1.3 grams. That is over 10 times less than the average human pinky. So even smaller than my pinky. Etruscan shrews are extremely active predators. They eat invertebrates and vertebrates. Even eating animals of their own size. And you might be thinking, how can they find some other vertebrate that is this small, so small that they can eat it? And don't worry, they aren't doing cannibalism, they are just eating babies. When hunting animals their size, they start by biting them on the head, and then immediately eat them without stopping for a second. Because they need to be fast, or they will die. At this size, being a warm-blooded animal becomes very hard. So they need to eat twice their own body weight every single day to survive. Maintaining their body heat is so hard for them that it would be impossible for them to colonize areas colder than where they live. To avoid losing all of their energy as heat, they can lower their body temperature all the way to 12 degrees. They are at the point where being a true endotherm isn't really possible anymore. And if you were wondering how the Etruscan shrew can use so much energy every day, it is because they breathe up to 600 times a minute and have an absolutely unbelievable heart rate of 1.5 thousand beats per minute. That is not an animal anymore, that is a car. Their life is so supercharged that they can reach sexual maturity at around 3 weeks old. But at least they live for 2 years, so I guess it's not that bad. And sorry for the self-promotion here, but if you like the video, please leave a like. Moving on to birds, the smallest bird is the bee hummingbird. On average, they weigh 2.3 grams and grow to 5.8 centimeters, and their females are larger than males. Female bee hummingbirds are probably bigger to make it easier to lay eggs. Considering that their eggs are about one fourth their size, and they lay two of them. Bee hummingbirds eat nectar like other hummingbirds, and they get it by licking the flower with their long tongue, like many times quickly. This lifestyle makes them pollinators, and that means that this bird has the same ecological needs as a bee. So they are taking some jobs from the invertebrates. Uniquely for birds, the bee hummingbird can fly in place like a dragonfly. By beating its wings 60 times per second, it is able to hover in place, even though it only has two wings. This combined with them being endothermic means that they need to eat about half their body weight in a day. And compared to the Etruscan shrew eating twice their body weight per day, that amount of food sounds easy to get, but just imagine eating half of your body weight every single day. For me that would be like 80 Big Macs. Every day. Bee hummingbirds live their life a lot slower than I thought. They live up to 10 years, and they reach sexual maturity at the age of 1 year. And also, as the Wikipedia article mentions, they are indeed the smallest known dinosaur. The smallest reptile on the other hand is the nanochameleon, with an average length of 2.6 centimeters, with the tail. 1.3 centimeters without it. And as expected, the gold blooded reptiles can get smaller than mammals or birds. These chameleons look really goofy with their big head and drooping eyelids. And that combined with the fact that they cannot change their color like other chameleons is probably because they are a simplified version of their larger relatives. 
it wasn't possible to shrink some of their features anymore, so they kind of just disappeared for the sake of becoming super small. These chameleons are almost unknown, and they were only discovered in 2021, and they have only been found in one location on Madagascar. But because they are so modest and live on the ground in remote jungles, it isn't really possible to know if they are super rare, super common, or something in between. Not many people would know that these things exist. Now to the real small hitters, fish. The smallest fish to our knowledge is the stout infant fish. Is the stout infant fish. With them averaging one milligram in weight, or one one thousandth of a gram, with one adult weighing only 0.7 milligrams. They range from 6.5 to 10 millimeters long, and that makes them barely bigger than a mosquito larva. And that is a very wild thing to say. And remember, if their adults are the size of mosquito larva, just imagine the newly hatched offspring. They must actually be microscopic. And for something that grows to a few millimeters long, one milligram in weight might sound really low. But remember that mass is basically doubled by 2 to the power of 3 when length, width and height are doubled. So if we say that at 7 mm they weigh 1 mg, then at 1.4 mm they would be 8, at 2.8 cm they would be 64, at 5.6 it would be 512, and at 11 cm we get a fish that weighs 4 grams in weight. Basically, I am saying that they really are that light. Just remember that they are extremely slender. And also this fly is bothering me, goddammit. They don't have pigments outside of their eyes. They don't have scales or even teeth. They are so simplified. If you want to find these fish for yourself, the stout infant fish are found on the Great Barrier Reef and the Osprey Reef on the northeast coast of Australia. There is another species, the dwarf gopi as well, from the island of Sumatra. They grow to an average size of 20.3 mm, and the smallest mature fish measured was about 7.9 mm. So a little bit bigger, but not by a significant margin. And now this last one might be a little bit surprising. Because amphibians can get even shorter than fish. The New Guinea Omo frog, uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, surprisingly from New Guinea by the way, averages only 7.7 mm long, making them the officially shortest adult vertebrates. But in my opinion they are not the smallest, because they can reach a weight of 10 mg, 10 times heavier than the stout infant fish. But remember that is still extremely small. The Etruscan shrew is 200 times heavier on average, than the New Guinea Omo frog. So they are 200 times smaller than the smallest mammal. The difference is that big. To make this possible, they have a simplified body plan compared to other frogs. They have no ribs and only seven vertebrae in their back. The skeletal support just isn't necessary with an animal this small. They also don't have a tadpole stage. They are already like frog looking when they hatch complete with like four legs and other uh, frog parts. As animals that breathe through their skin, a frog this small cannot survive without the moist leaves on the jungle floor. They would probably dry out faster than a snail. The New Guinea Amo frog isn't a unique evolutionary experiment at all. All of their relatives have similar adaptations, and all of them are almost as small as these frogs are. So it is possible that this is the hard limit for how small frogs can be. Maybe if they got any smaller, spiders and insects would simply do their role in the ecosystem more effectively. An exoskeleton is better the smaller you are, and gets worse as an animal grows. Large animals have the brain power to exploit weaknesses in armor, and they need to stay mobile. So when it comes to large animals, having an internal skeleton like mine is an advantage. Meanwhile, in the insect world, animals will happily fly into an open window for 5 hours, and despite being built like a tank, beetles are still able to fly. The rules are uh, completely opposite for small animals, and because of that I think the vertebrates 
I will never colonize those nieces, and I also think that the invertebrates are never going to grow like deer sized. It isn't going to happen. Now, this is with the exception of the vertebrates doing one thing. What if we just give up on our bones completely and embrace being a slug? <laughs> Maybe that way we could take control of those nieces from the ants. Now, of course, the only problem with that is that slugs exist and they have been doing this for 500 million years, so I don't think the vertebrates are going to be catching up on them when it comes to being a slug. And that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to be trying to release a video every single weekend and if I have any extra time I'm going to be releasing uh, extra ones of course. And remember to like the video and subscribe to see more of my content. Bye bye.